God, we thank you now, God, for this opportunity, God, to stand behind your sacred desk, God. Now, God, I ask that you hide the way behind the cross, God, that you will speak a word through me on today, God. Let your word manifest on the inside of your people, God, that it will show up on the outside, God. God, stir up the gift in this sanctuary, God. We bind up anything that's not like you in the name of Jesus, and we send it back to the pits of hell for which you come from, God. Loose your anointing, God. Loose your power in this place, God. And we will give you the praise, and we will give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We thank God for the opportunity for another chance to stand behind his sacred desk. Amen. We thank God for the great leader of this church, the great shepherd of this church, the Reverend Dr. Zanny Leland. Amen. To the minister, Mr. Blasso, Lambert, and Miller. Amen. Let me not forget to the apple of my eye, my good thing, First Lady Chapman. Amen. 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 I promise you I won't be before you long this morning. Amen. Amen. If you would, turn with me in your book to Jeremiah, the first chapter, beginning at verse 4. Amen. Jeremiah, the first chapter. Beginning in verse 4, amen. Amen. Matthew, though, it's a blessing just to be here, amen. Amen. Really to say it. When I first was called into ministry, I got my start here, amen. Amen. And Matthew, though, amen. We were came for four Sundays straight, amen. All right. Amen. And we thank God, amen. If you have it, the word reads. <coughs> Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou comest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nation. Then said I, Lord God, Behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. The Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Yes. Listen to verse 8. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, says the Lord. Amen. And I just want to read another scripture that you are familiar with. And it comes from Philippians, the fourth chapter, and the 13th verse, which it says that, um, I'm sorry, amen, you know, uh, let me get it right, amen, 4 and 13 said, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthened me, amen. If I could just use for a theme this morning, stop with the excuses and just say, yes, I can. All right. Stop with the excuses and say, yes, I can. Stop with the excuses and just say, yes, I can. Here's the thing. As I know today is your youth and children's Sunday. A lot of our children give us a lot of excuses. The reason they can't do certain things. The reason they can't go places because they have so many excuses. That's right. But let me tell you something. In order for a child to make up an excuse, they have to learn it from somewhere. All right. All right. And many times as adults, we make excuses. Uh -huh. The reason our children can't grow because we can't get them up in time to bring them to Sunday school. Uh -huh. And we dare not bring them to Bible class. Because we got so much going on in our daily living, amen. Here's the thing. I got too much pain in my heart. All the riots won't allow me to move. So I'm just going to slide by on today, amen. We want to come to church and we want to be in a hurry to come in and go back out. We want it like a microwave age time. We come up with so many. 
intended excuses, but, but I'm reminded of a long time saying that excuses satisfy the person that makes it. I wish I had some help up in here today. See, the thing about it, we got to let our children know they can do all things through Christ which strengthen them. There's no handicap on what we can do for God. Amen. See, here's the thing. I'm reminded that there was a person in a leadership position. And the thing was, yes, I can. And I want you to know, do you can remember who that person was? It's someone that we admire. It's someone that we look up, and his name is Barack Obama, amen. Barack Obama thing was, yes, I can, amen. Even though he had a difficult time in growing up, he knew that God was on his side, amen. And I believe if Barack Obama was standing right here in Macedonia this morning, I believe he would say, it was God amazing grace that brought him this far, amen. He didn't have any excuses. And went forth, yes, amen. Lord. Preacher, yes, Lord. Yes, what you trying to tell yes, us this morning? Yes, I'm trying to say we got to stop making excuses, yes, amen. Right. Right. See, God's been too good to us. Uh -huh. yes, the scripture Lord. said, let everything that has breath praise, praise the Lord. And I believe everyone in this place this morning got some breath in their body, amen. Right. And if God's been good to you, yes, you ought to be able to open and say thank you Jesus because it was by his grace and his mercy that you standing on top of the ground and the ground is not on top of you God's been so good to us some of us should have been dead a long time ago but because God is good to us he allowed us to see another day amen and some of us know that we have died heaven wasn't going to be our home you said, preacher, you talking to the young people. Well, let me tell you something. In order for the young people to get excited, we got to get excited ourselves. Yes. Because the scriptures that train up a child in the way he or she should go. So when they're old, they won't depart from the Lord. Well, guess what? If the children don't see you praising God, if they don't see you praying to God, if they don't see you worshiping God, how can they do it? Let me take you to the word here. Let me take you. Jeremiah. God sent a word to him. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah called him to be a prophet. He called him to be a prophet. See, Jeremiah's father and grandfather was priests. But known as pastors. They did the work of a pastor. But he had another call. Jeremiah. Yes, yes. He called Jeremiah to be a prophet. Right, right. And you know, a lot of we get intimidated by prophets. Uh -huh. Because prophets, therefore, speak a word to you just how the Lord give it to them. Amen. All right, all right. And you think about what Jeremiah was afraid at first. Uh -huh. He was afraid. He said, I am a child. Yes, yes. And you know how sometimes we don't want to receive anything from a child. But God said, don't be afraid. Yeah. He said, don't be afraid. But he said, God said, I am with you, amen. And I believe when, when God said that to Jeremiah, Jeremiah took on that scripture of the living that I can do all things yeah, through Christ which strengthened me. Preach what you said. First of all, I need you to know that we need some bold young people in yes, this world. Yes, we need some bold adults in this world. We need some people that will stop making excuses just because it's your family, just because it's your friend. We need some people that's going to stand on the word of God. Anybody understand that the word of God will make you free? Huh?
But I just need you to understand, you need to stop with the excuses. Uh -huh. And you just need to say, yes, God. So you need to understand that a lot of things can come our way, but the reason God wrote the thing, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthen me. Yeah. Realize that there's going to be some bad things. Yeah. Yes, he wants you to realize there's going to be some hard times. Yeah. There's going to be some financial difficulties. Yeah. But he wants you to understand, no matter what situation you're in, yeah. guess what? You can do all things through Christ, which strengthen us. You know, as black people, we got to know that first give the honor to God, who is the head of my life. If he's the head of your life, you ought to act like he's the head of your life. Because you know he's a doctor in the sick room. I got anybody in the house today that understand God is a good God. And he's worthy to be prayed. So you ain't got no excuses why you can't put your hands together and give God. Jesus, when you don't even 
you know he touched your body every morning. Give you another chance to give him some praise. Even when you know you're not living right. Even when you know you're not doing right. Even when you know you're not saying the right thing. But God, grace and mercy is some sacrifice for me. But let me tell you something. He never complained about that. But let me tell you something. The people messed up one day. They talked about Jesus. They lied on Jesus. They began to crucify my Jesus. They began to spit on him. They began to throw rocks at him. But one thing Jesus never did. He never made no excuses. He never complained about how the people was treating him. But let me tell you something. They hung him up. Between heaven and hell. And before he died, I'm sorry, y'all, he didn't die. He just went asleep. He looked up towards his God and he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And that's when he hung. He hung his head and he, he went to sleep. But let me tell you something. He already told the people, he said, if I be lifted up, he said, I'll draw all men unto me. And let me tell you something. They took him off that old rugged cross. They placed him in a barred tomb. And let me tell you something. They said, Death and grave had a conversation. And they said, Death as grave said, Grave, can you hold this man? And they said, Got power. And grave told, I got Abraham. But they said, okay, I need you to hold this man. But let me tell you something. He stayed there for one day. He stayed there for two days. But, but something happened on the third day morning. Say, grave called death. And said, death, I don't know who you sent me down here. But let me tell you something. I can't hold him no more. And let me tell you something. On the third day morning, he got it. But be 